All right, so uh, let's get started. So we're going to talk about aggregate loss models. Um, and that's kind of exciting because now we're about to uh, be able to, to bring together what we studied in terms of, of claim frequency distributions um, to model the number of claims or to model the number of payments in a risk model. And on the other hand, uh, we, can, we, we also have our severity models that we studied. So now in this chapter on aggregate loss models, on aggregate risk models, we will be able to combine both ingredients into a model that is capable of modeling the total risk or the total loss in a portfolio or on a specific contract. Yeah? So this is really a, a chapter about bringing it together, both the frequency and the severity uh, distributions. So this is chapter nine. This is also a chapter on which uh, we will do a lot of exercises. So there are a lot of different things that we can play with in this, uh, in this chapter. So Eva and Jens will upload, I think today or tomorrow, a new uh, collection of, of pre-recorded exercises. So you are of course encouraged to, to work with these and, and to watch these videos, collect your questions, and we'll do a, a Q and A like uh, the ones we did uh, last week. We're gonna schedule that uh, for one of the uh, next coming weeks once again. Okay. So here we go. Uh, we already discussed in our introductory section, in our introductory lecture, that if you look at an insurance company, that this insurance company exists because of its ability to pool risks. Uh, because by bringing together a lot of people, a lot of policyholders, by letting each of them pay uh, a certain, let's say, affordable premium, uh, this insurance company is capable of, of putting its motto into practice, let's say, uh, the contributions of the many to cover the misfortunes of the few, as we discussed earlier on, right? So what we're now really uh, are going to do is focus on this aggregate risk. This aggregate risk, which has, or which we could say becomes more manageable by bringing the risks together in the form of um, an insurance product or an insurance device. And of course, one of the um, big advantages there of, of pooling these risks is that the risk can be priced at a level that is affordable, at a level that will attract customers. Huh? So by, by paying this uh, rather small contribution, the uh, client policyholder is, is capable of, of transferring the risk that he or she is facing from her own uh, person or, or, or household or company to the insurance company. So what we want to do in this chapter is we want to build a model for the total payments in an insurance system, in an insurance portfolio. You can also look at the total payments on, on a contract of an, of an individual over a certain period of time, right? And we need two building blocks for that. We really need this frequency of events. So how often is an insured event happening? And if it happens, what is then the impact of this insured event, right? So we're really gonna put these two building blocks together, the number of claims, the frequency on the one hand, and the amounts of those claims, the severity on the other hand. So that's really what this chapter is about. And we're gonna start with the first simple uh, example, and you have to listen very carefully because the first quiz question is dedicated to this example. So we look at uh, the following um, problem. We have an insurable event that has a 10% probability of occurring, and if it occurs, it results in a loss of 5,000 euros, say. Now, market research has indicated that consumers will pay at most 550 euros, to purchase an insurance against this event. And the question is how many policies must a company sell in order to um, have a 95% probability of making money? So we're looking here at say N is the number of contracts we're gonna sell because that was the, the question was all about how many of these contracts or policies do we need to sell in order to make profit? with a certain given probability. So let small n be the number of contracts. I use a small n because it's not really, it's not a random variable that I'm looking for, it's a fixed uh, number. And I'm gonna use C 
for the number of claims, so the total number of claims that result from these uh, end contracts. So um, first of all, I need to think about yeah, what kind of distribution would this C follow? And if you look at the problem, we know that each contract um, is facing this insurable event that happens, that takes place with a 10% uh, probability. Yeah. So if you look at the total number of claims resulting from end contracts, then indeed, like the quiz question was asking us, we're looking at a binomially distributed random variable with the number of experiments being the number of contracts sold and the probability of, say, success is 10%. Yeah? So that's, the, uh, that's what uh, the distribution that we're going to use for the number of claims, the total number of claims that we're facing on this portfolio. Now, the question was also telling us that the loss amount in case the insured event is taking place, then the loss amount is fixed at 5,000 euros, right? So um, this was also part of the quiz question. So here the, the loss is, um, is a fixed amount. So there is no need to use a random variable here. There is no need to model this loss distribution. So this is per event. So that means that the total loss amount uh, on our collection of contracts, so the total loss is then 5,000 times C. That's the number of, uh, where the C is the number of, of events that we're facing on this portfolio. So what we want to do is we want to make profit with a 5%, uh, sorry, with a 95% probability, make profit with 95% probability. So that means when do we make profit? We make profit if the amount that we need to pay as an insurance company to our clients is smaller than what we're earning in terms of premiums being collected, right? So here you see, this is the premium volume that we collect. And here you see the total loss that we need to cover. Right, so we want the probability um, that this 5,000 times C is less than the 550 times N. We want this probability to be 95% or larger, right? And so you can think now, okay, how can I how can I calculate this? So you're dealing with a binomial variable. You multiply it with a constant, and you need to say something about uh, the distribution of this uh, random variable. Now, perhaps you can do that analytically. I didn't check that, but, but a good way to, to move forward here, a quick way would be to go for the normal approximation, right? So um, what we would then do is we would look at what is the probability that C is smaller than 0 0.11 times N. I just move the 5,000 to the other side. And I can say, well, that's the same as C minus and now I'm going to subtract the mean of my binomial, that's 0 0.1 times n, and I'm going to divide by the standard deviation in my binomial distribution. So that goes like this. And I'm going to see uh, what's the probability, what's the probability that this number is less than or equal to 0 0.11 minus 0 0.1 times n divided by this number that I got over here, right? And now I can say that this guy here, I can see it as uh, approximately standard normally distributed random variable. So I can say the probability, this is equal to the probability that some z, which is following a standard normal distribution, is less than or equal to uh, the quantity that I had here on my right hand side. And this probability, let's put it equal to 95%. So then it means that you can um, that you can put the value that you have over here equal to the 95% quantile from the standard normal distribution. So that gives you a way then to solve for the unknown n. 
the number of contracts. And you can see that in more details on the sheet. Yeah. So the last step that I'm taking is um, if I would sketch the standard normal distribution, I'm going to look for the point so that with a probability of 5%, I'm exceeding this point with a probability of 95%. I'm below this uh, particular point in my standard normal distribution. And that is then the 